I'm about to say something crazy. Souls games are really hard. Whenever someone says that the Souls games are some of their favorite video games of all time, they're usually a bunch of sweaty no-lifers who have nothing better to do. And while it is true that I have no life, I'm actually really bad at these video games, and yet despite all of this, the Souls series is one of my favorite video game series of all time, so much so that I'm willing to spend 10-20 to 20 hours editing this damn video, ranting about what I think the best games in the series are. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, ranking the Souls games from worst all the way up to what I believe to be the very best. Except it's not going to include Demon Souls because I haven't played it, I never made the financial burden of a decision to buy a PS5, and back when Demon Souls came out on the PS3 in 2009, I was too busy being a child playing Dora the Explorer, Dora Saves the Crystal Kingdom on the Wii. Please keep in mind that everything I say here is just my opinion, and it's very likely that I'm going to say something that you'll heavily disagree with. Like if Dark Souls 2 is your favorite game in the Soul series, you're one minute in the video and you're already really pissed off because I'm just like everybody else, and yeah, it's, uh, it, it's my least favorite in the series, sorry. I played Dark Souls 2 most recently out of all the Souls games, and yet it's the game I remember the least about. And that's saying something, because I remember a lot of useless shit in my brain. I could tell you the American Presidents 1 through 46 off memory, but I couldn't name you 5 Dark Souls 2 bosses off memory, because they're so forgettable. Like, I don't remember Throne Watcher and Throne Defender. I remember fighting them, and I can name them because I see their names now. And these are two of the best bosses in Dark Souls 2, but just like all the other bosses in this game, they're just so forgettable. Legendary poet Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. That makes a lot of sense why I remember very little about Dark Souls 2, because for most of this game, I felt nothing. The most I felt during this game was in the Iron Keep, and lord help me, those feelings should be kept in a bottle and sealed forever because those feelings were not good. But I have to say that Sir Alon is a top 10 Souls boss of all time for me. I love his moveset, I love the arena, but he is the last boss in the DLC that I fought. I had to play the whole Dark Souls 2 main game and DLC to get to him. But Majula, as an area, is peaceful, the soundtrack is beautiful, that's definitely one of the best parts of this game too. But if someone asks me what are my thoughts on Dark Souls 2, I'm probably just going to say that it's alright, and with a series this stacked, saying that definitely puts it at the very end of the list. Okay, let's talk about Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1 fans, I love you to death, but if you think this is the best Souls game, it's gotta be entirely driven by nostalgia, because this game is jank as hell. Dark Souls 1 for me is a very mixed bag, because there are things about this game that are fantastic, and there are things about this game that I wish I could just, like, forget forever. You've got fantastic areas in this game, like Sense Fortress, that's filled with a bunch of booby traps, but doesn't feel entirely bullshit, like it's actually fun. And then also in Orlando, like, do I even have to explain that? But then you have terrible areas like Blight Town and Tomb of the Giants, where the fun mechanic here is that you can't see shit. I am aware that grabbing a lantern makes navigating in this area much easier, but that navigation gets you to Gravelord Nido, who is one of the worst bosses in the Soul series. And the worst boss in the Soul series, Bed of Chaos, is also in this game. I don't have to have played Dark Souls 1 right when it came out to know that that experience, if you played this game on release, has to have been so much different than playing it today. Ornstein Smell, for example, probably the most iconic boss fight in the Soul series. People will defend this boss to the death because they learned how to walk and then they fought this boss because it was new and it was awesome and it was so different. If you played this fight now for the first time, it is jank as hell. People are in fear of saying some shit like that, but it is so true. This fight is jank. Alright, you know what, I've already gone off the rails, I'm just gonna keep on flying off the track. Here's a list of gang fights I think are better than Ornstein and Smo. Shadows of Yarnum, Demon Princes, the gargoyles you fight in the exact same game as Ornstein and Smo. Fuck it, the seven gargoyles you fight in Dark Souls 2. Ah, that's too far actually, my bad. I haven't complimented the game in over a minute, so let me just say that bosses like Gwyn and Artorius are fantastic, and the DLC just in general is amazing, I was very impressed with that. But Dark Souls 1 is a mixed bag, with a lot of highs and a lot of lows. But hey, at the end of the day, at least it has highs, am I right? I'm sorry Dark Souls 2 fans, you, you didn't serve that. Before I get into the next spot, I have to preface that these four games I absolutely adore. Forget the list, these are some of my favorite games of all time, and I cannot recommend playing them enough if you haven't already. The only problem with this now is that one of them has to go at number four, and that was the hard decision I had to make when making this video, but I finally made that decision and my fourth pick is going to be Bloodborne. 
Gosh, I'm asking for a pipe bomb to be sent to my house. I'll say it one more time just to be sure. Bloodborne is a fantastic game. I love the way this game looks with its gothic scenery. I also think Bloodborne is the hardest game in the Souls series, which is a welcome change from Dark Souls 1 and 2, which in my opinion aren't very challenging. I also think that Bloodborne has the best gank fight in the whole series, the Shadows of Yarnum, and you know, say what you will about that. Bragging about being the best gank fight is like bragging you could beat up a room full of 5th graders. The DLC in this game is also amazing. People hype the shit out of it, but honestly, the hype is valid. So you might be asking yourself, why is this game ranked at number 4? And yeah, I mean, <laughs> good question. When we get to games of this quality, I have to start being real nitpicky about what's wrong with these games, and Bloodborne has the most I can nitpick. First off being boss runbacks. Boss runbacks in Bloodborne are honestly the worst out of any Souls game. People will say Dark Souls 2, but in order for you to do a runback, the boss actually has to kill you, which happens much more in Bloodborne, because it's the hardest game in the series in my opinion, than it does in Dark Souls 2, and these runbacks are atrocious. Like yes, you can get shortcuts that help shorten the runbacks, but this, what you're seeing right now, this footage is a shortcut, and it is still this long. I have it playing on two times speed, and the runback is so long that I'm running out of shit to say, and I'm not even at the end, I still gotta go down this whole damn staircase just to get to the boss, and remember, if I die, I gotta do this all again. Oh, I'm at the door, thank god, I can talk about something else. Another thing about this game that I don't like is that your blood vials, which is this game's Estus Flask, uh, don't replenish when you die. You have to go out of your way to kill enemies that drop them, and that grind is so annoying. But let's be honest, you and I don't even do that. You just go to this Chalice dungeon that was definitely not intended by the devs that gives you a bunch of XP just for walking in, and you cannot argue that this shit was intended by the devs. It's literally called the Cum Chalice. That is not a discussion we can have here. <laughs> The total amount of bosses in this game is also kind of small, so when you fight a boss like Mikalash, host of my nightmares, or Rom, the vacuous shithead, it leaves more of a stain on the game than it would for games like uh, Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring would. I know I spent most of Bloodborne's segment just critiquing it, and I don't do that because I don't like Bloodborne. I just definitely needed to make a case for why I think it's fourth. I think Bloodborne is a fantastic game, as I've already said a million times, but Bloodborne fans scare me, so I have to keep on saying it just so I can uh, make sure that they understand that. But the gap between Bloodborne and the number three pick, I feel like, is like almost non-existent. But the gap between Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne is huge. Like, these last four picks are all pretty neck and neck, and so I had to make a case for why I feel like it just barely doesn't have that edge over the three games that are above it. But uh, as I've said, I'm going to say it one more time just to make sure no one comes knocking on my door later. This game is amazing. Uh, and if you have it as your number one pick, I totally understand that, um, but yeah, this is just my opinion, so. Anyways, moving on. Alright, now we can talk about Dark Souls 3. This game is criminally underrated, like I wouldn't be surprised if some of you forgot that I haven't mentioned this game yet. You got 25 bosses and they're almost all entirely bangers. You got Vora the Boreal Valley, you got the Abyss Watchers, you got Champion Gundir, you got the Twin Princes Lothric and Lorien, you got the Nameless King, and that's not even the DLC, that's just main game. I'm not even going to discredit the Bloodborne DLC, it is awesome, but Dark Souls 3's DLC, oh my gosh, you got Sister Freed, you got the Demon Princes, you have Madir, who is probably the best dragon fight in the whole Soul series, and yes, I am aware, he has competition, but you also have Slave Knight Gale, who is like the best boss fight in any any video game fuck just souls, that's gotta give this game some points. People say that the areas in Dark Souls 3 aren't that great, and besides the fair and keep, I don't really see it. Like yeah, there's not an area in this game as good as Anor Londo or anything, but wait, Anor Londo is literally in this game. Yeah, I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. The highs of this game are extremely high, and the lows of this game barely even exist. Like, yeah, Deacons of the Deep sucks dick and makes me think about running over a family of four, but that's like the only thing about this game that's like actually terrible, and everything else about this game is either great or just straight up fantastic. And so for that, I'm going to be putting Dark Souls 3 at number 3. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice! Holy shit! I love this game. <coughs> Forgive me, I uh, kind of sounded like a weeb there, I am not one of them, but uh, I'm just going to go over what kind of sucks about this game, just so I can start sucking it off for the last like minute and a half. Cool? Alright, let's do that. Demon of Hatred fucking blows, you bet your ass I cheesed that shit. I hate Blazing Bitch, and what were they thinking giving Guardian Ape a wife? And Fountainhead Palace, you know, beautiful area, uh, but she's a trap because uh, this shit actually sucks. 
These are definitely negatives, but let me just undermine them real quick. Demon of Hatred is optional. The Duo Guardian fight, thank god, is optional. And Fountainhead Palace, I could just run through that. So really, the negatives of this game are actually pretty avoidable. Okay, now I can talk about why this game is awesome, and there's definitely a lot of high points with this game, but I think the best place to start is the combat. The combat in this game is amazing. It definitely takes away from the normal approach of Souls games. Everything in this game feels like it could be in, like, a montage. Like, the aggression that you use against the bosses and how aggressive they are against you. Like, this, the game looks fun to play, and it is even more fun when you're actually playing it. Don't believe anyone that tells you that Sekiro is the hardest game in the series. Souls players only know how to dodge and roll, and Sekiro doesn't do that, so obviously they suck at this game. I just didn't really have that problem because, uh, I, I played Ghost of Tsushima. Sekiro handles difficulty perfectly. Take a look at Genichiro, for instance. This boss gives you two choices. You will either A, learn the mechanics of the game, or B, you will just die. He is the ultimate gatekeeper, and if you are not aggressive and you don't parry him constantly, you are never going to beat this fight. You have to keep on swinging. It's so different than the style of a Souls game that's going to throw you off at first, but once you fight him and you beat him, you get it. And nowadays, when I fight Genichiro multiple playthroughs in, I get it, and so I beat him in my first or second attempt, and that kind of maneuvering to make a boss fight like this is perfect. While we're on the topic of Genichiro, the voice acting in this game is just incredible, and Genichiro's voice actor specifically, I mean, like, no homo, but whenever he speaks, like, I kind of get goosebumps a little bit, and my tongue starts to swell, and my heartbeat, like, starts to increase, I start to, to I start to stutter. Shinobi of the Divine Air, <laughs> heresy, you say. Let's finish this. <coughs> oh, God, anyways, uh, they got Reinhardt in this shit. For Dark Souls 3, I feel like I had to defend my position for why it was so high, but for Sekiro, I feel like I don't have to do that. Like, Ishin the Sword Saint is the final boss of this game. Do I really have to convince you? It's crazy that this game is at number 2, because there's honestly only a handful of games I could think of that I like more than it, because this game is one of my favorite games ever. It's just one of them happens to be Elden Ring. Elden Ring is honestly a fever dream. They hit you with that Breath of the Wild shit, and you go out, go wherever the hell you want, the world is your oyster, and no matter where you go... Uh, you're gonna get railed, but this is a FromSoft game, so you should have known that was coming. Elden Ring is my favorite open world game of all time. A lot of open world areas don't lead the shit, uh, but in this one, I was just going through some random forest, and now I'm in a space dimension, and now I'm fighting a giant space deer, and all of this is optional. If you explore in this game, you are going to find something, and the chances are it is going to be cool as shit. Like, it is clear that the developers put everything they had into this game. I am a sucker for convenience in video games, and Elden Ring is such a convenient game. Like, there are no boss runbacks, so when Melania kills me for the 52nd time, I can immediately bash my head in a wall again. Gotta bring up Elden Ring's DLC, too, because it's like a whole new game with so many banger boss fights. Like, oh my goodness, they're so good. Why is Radon on my screen? Fuck you. Elden Ring was such a successful game that it brought so many people to the series, including me, and since I played this one, I have not turned back. If you know me at all, then you'll know my favorite video game series of all time is, uh, well, it's God of War. But hey, Souls is like a close second. I really love this series, like, a lot. But hey, that's the end of the video. This thing took me a very long time to make, so if you enjoyed it, uh, please leave a like. That would mean the world. And if you have any idea of what kind of commentary ranking video I should make next, please let me know, and I may consider to do it in like a year. But for now, I'm going to go into a coma, so uh, see ya.